today we relight the first two candles of the Advent wreath, the candle of hope and the candle of peace. Now we light the third candle. This is the candle of joy. As the coming of Jesus, our Savior, draws nearer, our joy builds with our anticipation of his birth. From the book of Isaiah, we read the words of our Lord. But be glad and rejoice forever in what I am creating. For I am about to create Jerusalem as a joy and its people as a delight. Isaiah 65, verse 18. From the New Testament, the words of Paul to the people of the church in Galatia. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. If we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. Galatians 5, 22 to 25. Let's pray. We joyfully praise you, O Lord, for the fulfillment of your promise of a Savior and what that means to our lives. Thank you for the gift of salvation through the birth of your Son, Jesus. Create us anew as we wait, and help us to see your glory as you fill our lives with your living spirit. Amen. Now, please stay tuned for a message of joy. Greetings from the Chetwin Gospel Tabernacle right here in Chetwin. I'm not sure when you folk will be viewing this particular devotion, but on behalf of our church, we want to wish you a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Today I want to talk a little bit about joy, and I want to preface that by reading from St. Luke's Gospel. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today, in the town of Bethlehem, a Savior has been born. He is Christ the Lord. Amen. Talking about joy. Well, we live in a broken world. We live in a time of upheaval, war, displacement of people, families by the hundreds of thousands because of war, and uncertainty and scarcity of food and political dictatorship in many parts of our world. There is a sense of nervousness as social media inaudates us with information unparalleled in the history of humankind. Climate change, for instance, COVID residue, and the recent announcement by Canada that we are now officially in a flu epidemic is causing an, an enormous amount of stress and strain on people from birth to my age, retirement. Why, even the procurement of everyday drugs to fight against or to hold at bay the strain of influenza is close to panic stage. The platitudes of politicians, the thousands of suggestions through social media, or the personal and individual stamina to rise above that which is pulling us down is often insufficient. But there is light at the end of the tunnel. There is good news to be had by all. We are approaching the Christmas season, and this season is always exciting and encouraging and it has the ability to enable us to live a life that is full and abundant. In fact, Jesus said on one occasion, I came that you might have life, that you might enjoy life, that you might have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. Let me take you back to the scripture that I read at the beginning of the message. Shepherds are out in the fields keeping watch over their flock, and an angel of God appears to them, 
and makes the greatest and most life-changing announcement ever made to humankind. Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today, in the city of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. The good news of great joy is not just to announce an event, but to announce the coming of a person who embodies joy, Christ the Lord. The Christ that is being announced is our Messiah. He is the Anointed One. He is the Savior of all mankind. And He brings with Him joy. And the coming of Jesus is not just the announcement of joy, as if it is something artificially manufactured, or conjured up with far-reaching platitudes or fuzzy, warm phrases that makes it presentable and acceptable? No. The announcement of joy is personified in Christ, and to know Christ and to accept Christ into our heart is to internalize the gift of joy. I can't imagine what the shepherds must have been feeling, the excitement, the announcement, the presence of angels with heavenly choir, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. Let God be praised today. The shepherds have already been changed. They received the news with such joy and gladness that when the angels had gone away, the shepherds had gone into Bethlehem to see that which the angel had talked about. And lying right there in the manger, laying in a crude cradle, was the very Son of God, the Messiah, the Savior, the embodiment of joy. Why, joy had indeed filled their hearts, and this joy was demonstrated in a very practical way. The Bible says, after the shepherds came and saw, and I quote, when they had seen him, Jesus, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all of the things that they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. There is excitement, and God is not just filling their hearts with joy. God gives them the gift of joy through the person of Jesus Christ. Ah, uh, yeah, I know, I realize today that Christmas is so many things to so many people. Food, gifts, celebrations, family, decorations, Christmas trees, and sometimes maxed out credit cards. But the greatest gift one can celebrate is the gift of the Lord Jesus Christ. And with that gift comes joy, peace, love, and hope, and many other things. The Bible talks so much about joy. Nehemiah, speaking to his people after the walls of Jerusalem had been repaired, said to them in a moment when they were dispirited, he said to them, Do not grieve, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Amen. And David said in Psalm 16 and 11, you have made known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. Isn't that absolutely awesome? And again in Psalm 126, 
Those who reap in tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who sow in tears will reap with songs of joy. And in 1 Peter 1 and 8 we read, Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and a glorious joy. We sometimes sing the Christmas song or the Christmas carol, Joy to the World. Ah, oh, wouldn't it be awesome that even in Ukraine today, that the entire nation, and Russia included, would experience the joy of Christ's coming. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her king. Let every heart prepare him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. Another stanza to that lovely Carl says, Joy to the world, the Savior reigns. Isn't that awesome? Let men their songs employ. While fields and floods, rocks, hills, and plains, repeat the sounding joy. Repeat the sounding joy. And so today, as we consider and reflect and think about all of the things that's happening in our world today, I want you to take a deep breath. And I want you to anticipate Christmas with excitement, knowing that Jesus, God's Son, our Savior, came in the flesh to bring us life, to bring us hope, to bring us peace, and to bring us joy. My prayer to you today is that Christmas will be a time of great celebration and Christ will be the center of it all. God bless you. Let me just pray with you, Lord. Just let your blessings surround those who are listening today and let the joy of Christmas, the birth of Christ, the gift of joy, fill us to an overflowing. In Christ's name, Amen. Merry Christmas. God bless you. We love you in the Lord. Amen. Today, greetings from Pastor George and family and friends at the Chetwin Gospel Tabernacle. It's a joy and it's a pleasure to greet you again in the name of Jesus Christ. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about truth. First of all, I want to read to you a story that you may be very familiar with from Luke chapter 19. It's an encounter that Christ is about to have with a guy called Zacchaeus. So Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was very wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but being a short man, he could not because of the crowd. So he ran ahead climbed a sycamore tree to see him since Jesus was coming that way. And when Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. Now look at the reaction of the people. All the people saw this and began to mutter, Has he gone to be the guest of a sinner? Remember, that's why Jesus came. Now, you are familiar, I'm sure, or you ought to be familiar, and if you're not, I'll remind you that in the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve made a terrible choice when they went against God's command and God's will for them, and it succumbed to the temptations of the devil. And because of that sin in the Garden of Eden, you and I today are subjected to the evils of that fall. For instance, the Bible says, and Paul, referencing what happened in the Garden of Eden, said, For as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will be made alive. And in Luke 19, we read, For the Son of Man came to seek 
and to save those who are lost. Lost because of the sin of Adam and Eve. I love this verse. You've heard me say it before. I'm going to say it again. The thief comes only to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I came that you might have and enjoy life and have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. Here's the truth, and we want to talk a little bit about truth. Here's the truth. If we're trying to have and enjoy life in abundance to the full till it overflows without having a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, then we are living a lie. Because full life, abundant life, is found in Christ. And I use God's Word today as my source of authority. I can truthfully say that real life, according to the Bible, is found in Jesus Christ. For instance, John says in his gospel, in him was life, and that life was the light of men. John 11, Jesus said, I am the resurrection, and I am the life. Again, in John 14 and 6, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And then in 1 John, he who has the Son, that's Jesus, he who has the Son has life. We're not talking about religion. We're not talking about church membership. We're not talking about supporting programs to help other people. We're talking about having the Son of God living within us, and He brings us eternal life. It's a personal relationship with God's Son. Well, Zacchaeus is looking for truth, and truth is embodied in Jesus Christ, who himself said, I am truth. Real truth is found in Christ. At least two tax collectors are identified in the New Testament, Matthew, known as Levi, and Zacchaeus. Both were social outcasts because of the choice of their trades. Matthew was a local tax collector, while Zacchaeus was the chief tax collector of that area. And because of loopholes and bad bookkeeping, tax collectors often fleeced their own people for personal gains. Well, it's interesting that tax collectors and sinners were in a class of their own. One day, Jesus saw Matthew sitting at the tax collector's booth, and he called him to follow. And immediately, as per the Bible, Matthew got up and followed him with the Pharisees asking, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? And Jesus responded and said, That's why I came, for the very purpose to save sinners and tax collectors. And with all of this information available, Concentrating on Zacchaeus, this tax collector was certainly wealthy, but he was far from being happy. Not only is he unhappy, but being an outcast by society made him a very lonely man. There is absolutely no doubt that Zacchaeus had heard about Jesus and that he welcomed tax collectors and sinners. Maybe he had heard about Jesus through his fellow tax collector, Matthew. But he heard that Jesus welcomes tax collectors and sinners. And the Bible says in Luke 19, this little man was desperate and determined to find out more about who this Jesus was. And the Bible says of, of, of Zacchaeus, he wanted to see who Jesus was. Amen. His desperation and determination were intense and faith-driven because just to be seen mingling with the common crowd could easily put his life in danger, this Zacchaeus. History will tell us 
For to be nudged or kicked or pushed about was not uncommon when tax collectors took chance to be with the crowd. And when you are truth-driven, nothing can stand in the way of you and your goal. Zacchaeus was determined to see who Jesus was. Looking down the path, the dusty road, Zacchaeus sighted a tree. A tree similar to an old English oak with a huge trunk and very large extended branches. And this little guy was about to try some majestic aerobics. And upon reaching the tree, he scrambled to a safe and secure place because he wanted to see Jesus. This guy, this Christ, who loved sinners and tax collectors. Well, Jesus is aware, and when he approaches the tree, Jesus said, Zacchaeus, I want you to come down. I must stay at your house today. There is no indication in Scripture that Jesus had actually had an encounter with Zacchaeus before. But Jesus saw him, and being who Jesus is, he recognized that there is a man who was searching. For what? In this case, he's searching for truth. And so the response was immediate, and when Zacchaeus and Jesus met on solid ground, Jesus was immediately welcomed into the home of Zacchaeus, and the response of the people was terrible. It was anything but positive or encouraging. Here is a tax collector without a friend, meeting a new friend, seeking truth, beginning a new lease on life, and the response of the people was negative. One said, he has gone to be the guest of a sinner. He was actually gone to be the guest of a man who was seeking after truth. And the question was asked of Christ in Matthew, in Luke 5 and 30, why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? And then in Luke 15 and 2, this man welcomes and he eats with them. I think it's awesome that Jesus can reach out as the embodiment of truth and welcome anybody and everybody who is prepared to have Christ come in and make a change completely in their lives. And so the established scripture tells us that the purpose of Christ was to come and save people from their sin. The conversion of Zacchaeus was for real. He found the truth in Christ. And the change in his heart is now complete. The truth for Zacchaeus was discovered in that happiness, contentment, fulfillment was not to be found in the possession of things or stuff, but in a personal relationship with the truth, Christ. And so the sinner turned child of God demonstrated his genuine rock-bottom faith by declaring himself, Look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor, and if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. That must have been such a dramatic, life-changing experience for Zacchaeus. And with all of the monies that he had collected, he couldn't find the truth, couldn't find peace, couldn't find joy, couldn't find satisfaction, couldn't even find a real purpose to live until now. And Jesus said to Zacchaeus, let's just call him Zach. Jesus said to Zach, today salvation has come to this house because this man too is a son of Abraham. Ladies and gentlemen, I know for some truth is relative, but based on God's word, if I want to use that as my authority, truth is found in Jesus Christ. And if today you're seeking and you're searching and you're wanting and, and you want peace within your heart so that tomorrow morning when you awaken, it won't be uh, good morning, 
God or good God is mourning. Your reaction to the rising of the sun will often depend upon your relationship with Jesus Christ. I'd rather wake up tomorrow morning and say, good morning, God. I'm going to have a great day. And I would ask you today to seek the truth in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so, Father God, I, I just pray today that the truth, the knowing of Christ as our personal Savior, the forgiveness of our sin, being in a relationship with God the Father through Jesus Christ the Son under the auspices of the Holy Spirit will be the experience of hundreds and thousands and tens of thousands as we reflect upon the Word and accept Christ into our heart. In your name we pray it and we give your praise. God blessing, take care, have an awesome day, and remember, He is the truth. Amen. Thank you.